Joining me now is someone who covered Kissinger, NBC News chief foreign affairs correspondent and chief Washington correspondent, Andrea Mitchell. Andrea, thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. To help us remember the former Secretary of State. What do you think his legacy will be? We just talked about so many of the different moments in which he played a pivotal role. I think the largest legacy is China. Opening to China, we think of it now as, well, of course we have relations with China, but they, he did it himself in secret negotiations, brought Nixon to China. It was part of all of the larger foreign policy, you know, try, it was a play against Russia, certainly, and he was also trying to, you know, trying to down, sort of get the Cold War neutralized a bit, mm. a bit of a thaw with the Soviets. So that was very much setting the stage for what then happened with you know, Ronald Reagan and Gorbachev later on. But this, but China was the biggest play because now we talk about the two superpowers. It's not Russia. Mm -hmm. It's China, economic, technological, military, and the United States. And what was so remarkable was that when his already 100 years old, this past July, he went to China, red carpet from you know, Xi Jinping, uh, before setting the stage, really, for President Biden's November meeting. It's just extraordinary. And he advised presidents of both parties Absolutely. throughout his life, even after he'd left office. Andrea, we just heard from the Secretary of State, who made extensive comments about the life and legacy of Secretary Kissinger. We haven't heard from the president yet, though. There hasn't been an official White House statement. We anticipate there will be one. It, we don't know why yet. We don't. And it, it was just interesting. I was talking to our colleague Kelly O'Donnell over there, and she was told this morning there would be a statement. Uh, he died yesterday. There were statements pouring in, you know, as you pointed out, George W. Bush mm -hmm. showed a painting that he had made of Henry Kissinger, a portrait, part of one of those paintings that he has made. And nothing from the White House. And I don't know whether, it's, whether there is something personal between Joe Biden and Henry Kissinger, or just he's very busy with Israel. But it would seem unusual, because in fact, in Xi Jinping's statement of condolence, he mm. sent that condolence message to President Biden on mm. behalf of China for the breakthrough back in 1972. So that was a message to the President of the United States from President Xi Jinping about Henry Kissinger, but we haven't heard from the President of the United States himself. It is remarkable. We will continue. And we should point out that his legacy, I, I want to say, is very mixed because he extended the Vietnam War uh, long past when it could have ended into Cambodia, into Laos, got the Nobel Peace Prize, certainly prematurely, and was called a war criminal. So this is a man of many contradictions. You, again, as I said it, at the top of this discussion, covered him. You got to question him, including on Meet the Press. Yes. What were some of your memorable takeaways? Well, uh, one that we're going to show tonight on Nightly News is in 1986, we were asking about <laughs> things don't change. The Nicholas Donilov, mm -hmm. a U.S. News and World Report journalist, was being held by Russia mm -hmm. inexplicably. And I was asking Secretary Kissinger, how has this administration, it was the Reagan administration, handled the crisis? And should they have another meeting with the Soviet leader while this journalist is being held? And he said, well, I think that after a little confusion at the beginning, you know, when they were not all, they were probably in spread out in Santa Barbara, or I don't know whether they were on holiday, but he said it was a little confusing, but they, they're getting it right now, and that it would be very difficult for Secretary Schultz to have these meetings, mm. Secretary of State, with the, with the Soviets. Which is a very there's still blunt a reporter answer. Being yes. Yeah, he was, he was pretty, pretty clear about these things. Mm. Um, and just also think that he came as a teenager, a 15-year-old mm. from Nazi Germany, the first Jewish Secretary of State eventually, um, and went back to Germany. They were fleeing the, the Holocaust in 1938, which is right after Kristallnacht. And um, he eventually went back uh, as, with the U.S. Army in World War II to Germany. Just extraordinary. Andrea, thank you so much for being here. We will look for your piece on Nightly News. We appreciate your making time. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.